Whiplash here, welcome back to another great tutorial for the XNA Basics series. Now last tutorial, yeah, we didn't do anything much, just look at the basics of the coding that Microsoft provided for you for a new Windows project for XNA. So now is where the good stuff is going to come into play. We're going to display a sprite on a screen. And just display. We'll worry about movement later on. Okay. So before we go into the coding, we need to gather the resources for that image. And to do so, we go to the website. It's phstudios.com. P-H-S-T-U-D-I-O-S dot com. And to the right of the main website, you will see a content list and the third bullet down You'll see XNA CG2 Space Shooter. Click that. And now you'll see we have a list of tutorials and source code links that we can download. So you can download the full tutorial. Zip Archive includes the PDF tutorial, edited source, and sprites used in the game. Now this is the XNA 2.0 version, but we're only worried about the sprites so you can just download that save it to your computer and open up visual studio okay so you open up your C sharp 2008 or your full visual studio application and let's create a new project and you can do it in the recent projects list and I just deleted that so I'm just gonna click yes alright so Visual C Sharp XNA Game Studio 3.0 Windows Game 3.0 and let's call it Sprites. And just because it drives me nuts, I'm gonna rename Game 1 to Sprites Game dot CS. Sprites Game. Yes. Alright. So now in our content we need to get this sprite to the, our content sub project and we can do that by right clicking the content sub project go to add existing item and go to your wherever you saved it to I saved it to the desktops sprites and we're only gonna worry about the player.png for now okay so now that we have it inside our solution we need to get it inside our memory when we run the game. Now to do so we need an object of some class to identify it's a picture and usually for your PNG or bitmap or some 2D sprites we're going to use a texture 2D and I'm going to call it player sprite. Okay so all this does was created a object of texture 2D called player sprite and that is set to null because we didn't do anything with it yet okay so we got an object but what about these this uh, player.png how do we get that into memory itself well it's a content so we go to the load content method we don't go to initialize because it's a image file and we want to do it in the content method now the player.png is an image file that needs to be transformed into a texture 2D object. So that's set to null, so we don't need to we don't want that null. So we just say player sprite is equal to and what I like to do is use a content object that is derived from game that they give you. We just say content dot load less than and I'd say less than because bracket is can be that, that, or that. So I just say less than to. It's the easiest way to identify. It's the less than symbol. All right, now it wants us a T, and this can be a class name that the load can use. So it can use the. It can load an audio file. It can load various different types. But for this tutorial, we are only worried about a texture 2D that it wants to load. 
Okay, so now we provide an opening parentheses. And now it wants an asset name. So what is an asset name? Well, we'll go to the Solution Explorer. We click the player.png. And that will set it to focus. Now we go down to the properties window. And if you do not have that, go to view properties window. And it will say asset name at the top. We just copy that and paste it in our code. And we need to wrap quotes around these and ending parentheses and semicolon. Now to make sure this is all correct we can press F5 to run it. And we have no crashes so it's fine. Okay so now that we have it loaded into our memory we can now display it. And we need to unload content later but let's go and worry about displaying it. Now how do we go about displaying any graphics require, that require 2D? Well, they gave us a sprite batch object when we generated our code. So the sprite batch is responsible for all 2D graphics. Now here's a trick. You see a sprite batch dot draw method up here. And draw string we'll worry about that's to do text. But we can't just say draw and draw anywhere we want. We need to set a uh, sort of a gap in our coding. We need to isolate the drawings so that they only happen between a sprite batch dot begin and a sprite batch dot end. And this is just to simply just begin the drawings and end the drawings. Oops, no capital S. Alright. So anything between a sprite batch dot begin and sprite batch dot end will be drawn. Of course you need to say sprite batch dot draw. And we'll worry about different begin types and stuff like that like alpha blend and stuff you don't need to worry about for right now but for now we'll just worry about basic begin and end and draw alright you see draw has one of seven different methods to choose from now if you're not familiar with C sharp and method overloading you should look into that but basically it's the same method that can accept different parameters and does different tasks from one method to another. So this draw method that has a texture 2D, rectangle, and color parameter is different than this draw method that has just a texture 2D, vector 2, and color. So they do different things, but right now we'll worry about number one. And if you don't know about method overloading, definitely look into that because it will be very useful for you later on. So we already have a texture 2D object above called player sprite. Okay, so now we pass that to the draw, but we need to pass two others. So we add a comma. Now it wants us to add a rectangle. Now the way it works is we need to provide the draw method with the position we want to draw and how big we want it to draw. So for this game, let's draw it at the top left and the full sprite. So we don't need a rectangle object created above. We can just say a new rectangle while calling the draw method. And it has one of two so we can have x comma y comma width comma height so x and y are for position 0 comma 0 to identify the top left of the game window now the width and the height are the width and the height of the image itself now how do we get that we got that information